one's responsibility as a writer is, is going to be very similar to one's responsibility as a citizen. I mean, if you, if you live in a community, I think you have responsibilities. I mean, you don't get the benefits without responsibility. I mean, that, that the so-called so freedom uh, or, or uh, freedom of expression and so forth, I mean, that, that's, that is not, that is earned. It's all earned. Well, you were so central to setting up Penn Canada, you and Margaret. And we got a lot of work done. When you started it up, I read that you said that it, it was a big shock is the wrong word, but having set up the Writers' Union mm -hmm. and the, the uh, Writers' Trust, mm -hmm. that for the first time you were setting up something and becoming part of something which was of no advantage to you. I'm, I'm glad. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that the purpose of Penn was to help others. Yeah, absolutely. Not to, absolutely. Not to the advantage of one's own career. No. No. But to help peop people elsewhere. Yeah. That's the only way you get the, the strength. And it's amazing how fast it grew, because that was 84. Yeah. And what, five years later, we had probably the biggest International Congress of Penn, yeah. maybe in history, I don't know. It was a hell of a good one. We all followed behind you, the president, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I guess it was Greg Gatenby. Yeah. And Eugene. Yeah. yeah. And myself. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was a, a very good group. It really was. And the amazing thing was, I think, something like 600 writers came? Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't actually count them all, but I... I, <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading that in, I think it was probably your, your first Congress in Korea, the Americans, yes. Susan Sontag, oh boy. wanted to make you know, grandiose declarations oh, yeah. and attack everyone. And she was very uh, not good at dipl diplomacy. No, no, she wasn't. <laughs> no, she wasn't. Yeah. I remember you saying that what was fascinating was centers like U.S. and England yeah. and yeah. France, they had a view of announcing their position. And the Canadian was much more, how do we negotiate cleverly yeah. to get people out of prison? You sort of went endlessly into seeing civil servants and politicians behind the scenes yeah. and eventually convince them to release someone. It's a great feeling. One at a time. Yeah. One at a time. <laughs> We're not going to run out of them. No. Well, that, you know, that's the amazing thing is the number of writers in prison just stays up around 800 or something yeah. a year. Yeah. It's about figuring out in each case yep. what's going on, yep. why are they doing it to this person, yep. and what could we do yep. that might convince that government yep. to let that person out. So it's like carrying on 800 separate foreign policy initiatives in an organization which is based on being smart in debate, <laughs> you know, smart in talking people into things. But, you know, we don't have any guns, we don't have any money. So in those days we had two congresses a year often. Yeah. And so the spring there was a smaller one in southern Netherlands in Maastricht. Uh -huh. A very good group. It went very easily, and I, I felt. You led us, led the whole organization in trying to reform Penn. Yeah. Every 20 or 30 years you have to completely reform it to make it work for the day. That Master Congress was the beginning of the modernization of Penn International and it was led by Penn Canada under you. And the way you figured out we should do it was to run Chinua Achebe for president, the great Nigerian novelist yeah. who should have had the Nobel Prize. Yeah. Yeah. I was my first Congress, I was very impressed. It was real work, very effective. If you have the kind of things which I've had, the freedom to make a mess of things for myself and make some of them better, live with the, with the woman I love and my kids, and I, I, I'd, be, I'd be stupid if I was if I wasn't thankful.